Hi, my name is Paul Mason, and I want to speak a little bit about how we can determine the distances to stars, at least the nearby stars. The method is called stellar parallax, and it's the same method that animals with two eyes use to determine distances to objects. And the way it works is it utilizes the fact that the Earth orbits the sun. So if we have the diagram showing the sun, a star that's sort of nearby compared to much more distant stars. The scale of this is uh, way out of scale, by the way, because the orbit uh, the distance between the Earth and the Sun is one astronomical unit, one AU, and the distance to the nearest stars are hundreds of thousands of astronomical units away, just the very nearest stars. So if we consider that the Earth orbits the Sun, it will be at one point in the orbit in June, six months later in December would be in the opposite point in its orbit, and if the star is here, there will be a, uh, the star will appear in December over here, kind of more near that yellow star there. In June, the star will appear closer to the red star down over here. So this is uh, one of the reasons why that ancient people, like in ancient Greece, who thought that the heliocentric model could not be correct, that the geocentric model had to be correct, because if the Earth orbited the Sun, in their thinking, then the stars would shift in the sky. And indeed, they were correct. They were not able to see that shifting because stars are so terribly far away compared to um, uh, the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. So this is the stellar parallax. What is the effect as seen from Earth? And how do we employ it? Well, the uh, uh, Earth at one point will see the star superimposed upon a back group of background stars in one position and it, as it moves, it will be seen in another position. So by measuring the shift of the star that is moving, we could find the uh, uh, one that's moving and uh, determine how far it has moved. The equation, well, this is actually very simple. The parallax angle is here. Um, the angle between the sun and the st star on that line and the earth and the, the star at one of the positions six months away, one astronomical unit. So we have a baseline of one astronomical unit. The angle is one arc second. So we have 360 degrees in a circle. Each one of those degrees it can be broken into 60 minutes of arc and each minute of arc can be broken into 60 arc seconds. So uh, the, the equation for the distance, if we consider the special unit parsecs, which we are uh, using to define this equation, and the parallax angle in arc seconds, one divided by the parallax angle is the distance in parsecs. So if the uh, parallax angle is one arc second, then the distance will be one parsec. If the parallax angle is 0.5 arc seconds, a half an arc second, which would be the case for a nearby star, then the distance would be two parsecs. And um, uh, one more example, let's say the distance was 
five, uh, this, so the parallax angle is 0.2 arc seconds. One fifth of an arc second, the distance would be five parsecs. The one parsec is equal to 2,665 astronomical units. That is by construction of the picture. If we include the fact that we can measure the speed of light, we could convert that to light years. A light year is the distance light travels in one year, and 3.26 light years is one parsec. So a parsec is a bit, uh, several times the distance of a light year. So now what we're going to do is take a look at a demonstration so we'll turn out all the lights and see uh, what happens when we have a real situation with parallax so Almost there, and then you'll notice that we have some stars. On the wall. So, if we take a look at those stars, these stars glow in the dark. And, uh, from this view of the camera, we can see quite a number of the stars there. But one of the stars is closer than the others. And so, if we keep in mind that we could simulate the motion of the Earth around the Sun by the movement of the camera, we will do that so that we can see which of these stars is the closest. So this might be winter and then spring, summer, fall, back to winter, spring, summer, then fall again, and ending back in winter. So, can you tell which one of the stars is moving? That's the effect of parallax.